Oh my god, it's Batman! Oh, he just took out his face. Gotta watch out. Those goggles are hot. I need those goggles. Batman whoa! He just shot a gun! This when does Batman shoot guns? Oh, that guy better watch out. He just got ate by a motorcycle! That guy just got shot by a motorcycle! That guy got ran over by a motorcycle! That guy did not see that coming! Oh, come on. This is for girls. I don't want to see this. This is like the most stupidest thing ever. Oh, good job, Sarah. My name is Tina Dash. Well, I don't give a crap. I was talking about the baby doll. And... Oh, you get to feed a baby? She just ate that. What kind of magic did she use? But it doesn't matter what Hasbro got because my action figure is better than anything else. You know what my action figure has? Freaking clothes pigs! Yeah! Yeah, go ask your What the heck is that demented thing? Is it a mouse? A bear? Why does it have clothes pegs? This mouse a bear is actually buddy. Come on. Since I was Come five years old, Come on. Been my best Come buddy. Come to them. Come to Papa. Growing up as a poor kid in a neighborhood full of awesome action figures from the toy kingdom itself, China, I needed something to compete. My mom bought me a $4 knockoff Beanie Baby of a raccoon. Originally it did have a tail, but my mom said I ripped it off. We is the best of friends. The problem with Action Raccoon was that he was short. Action Raccoon was competing with tall, muscular man with double mind weapons, with guns and strong boys, all the Action Raccoon needs something similar. They would make him faster, stronger, better. They would need to be long, sturdy, and most importantly, cheap. Close pigs came to mind. <laughs> This is what I was like when I was five. The superheroes got gadgets, vehicles, sidekicks, and any other thing that would force kids to force their parents to buy more junk. Action Raccoon did too, just for derp cheap. One example was the flying green mischievous assailant, Green Fox. He was kind of like a flying squirrel with a fox head. But he didn't just fly, oh no. Thanks to some magnets in his paws, he can also climb my fridge! Like a boss! Looking back, probably the best sidekick in the world. Kicked Robin's ass any day. Uh, unfortunately, I lost him during the move from Nova Scotia to Ontario. So what you're looking at are some rough sketches that my friend Ricky Sawyer drew. The gadgets were simple yet awesome. Everybody loves skateboarding, whether or not they're good at it, and Tech Techs were pretty big, as well as Tony Hawk. So, I got a knockoff version of Tech Techs, and I had some clothes pigs. And now it flies. However, if you thought that was awesome, prepare for your socks to be blown away for the Action Raccoon Clip Magnets. Now, not only does your Action Raccoon have the ability to climb your fridge, he can now transform into a motorcycle! I don't understand why more businesses don't capitalize on children's imagination and creativity. Products such as Lego, Barbie, Transformers, Pokemon, and Plastic Armament depend on the child's ability to be creative and interact with not just the toy, but others as well. Hi, it's nice to meet you. I want those clothes bags. You can't have these clothes bags. No! My God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't worry, I should carry in Mega Man's here! Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> That's how Bionicle and Hero Factory still run strong. From the beginning, you had to create a toy from the instructions. To enforce more creativity, a child could combine the creation with others. <laughs> When it comes to Pokemon, interacting with others was the core part of the product. Not just playing against friends, but trading. Businesses nowadays show toys with amazing gadgets, bright colors, and storylines where the hero always wins. Thus, the child doesn't need any creativity, so he or she won't use it. Or they just show their product's butt at the child.
That sells. Backflip. Dodge. Oh. Revenge of the Goombas. Now they jump on you. <laughs> <laughs> no contest. I know that some of these toys sell it like hotcakes, but how often does the toy stick around as the kid's best bud? I remember as a child that I got many toys for Christmas and birthdays, but most of them are lost. Except for one. Action Raccoon. As I got older, I added more things to him. Not the toy, his legacy. In grade 10, I entered my school's talent show with an original piece. The Action Raccoon Theme. Ricky Sawyer has even recently invited Action Raccoon to be a character in his ninja comic, Kunsai. That works for you? I knew it'll work for you! Those ninjas better watch out for the 3 inch, 1 ounce, closed pig wonder, Action Rack. As I got older, I began to lose contact with a lot of things from my past. Family, friends, toys, especially when I moved from Nova Scotia to Ontario. Action Raccoon, he's more than just some old stuffed toy that I carry around because I'm immature. Well, that's one of the reasons, but he is more than just a toy. He's a friend. He's an artifact to me. Not very many people, not very many people get to say that they have kept their old toy from when they were young. They later on regret it because, you know, they want to get in contact with their old past, you know, with nostalgia. Or it turns out that those toys are worth bazillions of dollars. But, Action Raccoon, I wouldn't sell him for a million bucks. He is priceless to me. Last year, I lost Action Raccoon. I tried to come to terms with the fact that I lost him, but I just couldn't. The more I thought about him, the more I was sad and I actually cried. So I started putting up these posters around. $40 is a ton of money for a $4 toy, but it didn't matter to me. I needed my best buddy. And just like every other happy ending, somebody called. And I got my best buddy back. And I lost $40. Booyah.